In this video, you'll learn how to use Earwire Bender No. 1 from Potter USA. This tool works best when mounted in a small bench vise or by using the two mounting holes and some screws and bolts to attach the base to a sturdy work surface. In this video, I'll be demonstrating the tool without a vise for those of you that don't have one at home. Here you can see the engraved lines on the bottom showing the length of the wire to cut and also what the ear wire will look like when finished. We recommend using 20 gauge half hard sterling silver wire. Also, this ear wire former works best when the ends of the ear wire are balled up. Here I have some paste flux and I'm just dipping the ends of my wire in the flux and I'm going to melt a ball on the end of each ear wire. For the most consistent results in your ear wire shapes, we recommend doing a large batch of ear wires at once, but this tool does make it super easy to make multiples that are exact copies, even when doing ear wires one or two at a time. So go ahead and heat the wire until um, it starts to melt and a ball forms at the end of the ear wire. You can melt as large or as small of a ball on the end that you want. But um, it's important to kind of note when forming your balls how much of the wire it takes up in melting. So I generally give myself about a quarter of an inch of wire for the size ball that I typically use on the end of my ear wires. And then once you have melted the balls on each of your ear wires, go ahead and pickle and clean them. Here you can see roughly the size ball that I'm using for my ear wires. This one's just slightly larger. So these are going to get pickled and cleaned, and then you're ready to use the ear wire bending jig. So you can see I have my bald end. <clears throat> And if you'd like, you can cut it to the length engraved on the tool itself. This will give you a shorter style ear wire. Um, you can also leave the ear wire as long as you want. So I'm going to show you here with the length that the ear wire bender has engraved on it. And then I'm also going to show you one that's roughly a half an inch longer. Okay, so we're going to start first with this one that's cut to the engraved line. Go ahead and lay the ear wire down on the base and locate the end of the loop former with the two dowels. Note that one dowel is longer than the other. Insert the longer dowel into the outermost hole in the base. The short dowel should be toward the outside of the base rather than aligned with the second hole in the base. Insert the wire between the two dowels with the balled up end facing down, roughly keeping it parallel to the length of the base. Pull the wire tight and hold it flat against the base. Apply slight downward pressure and twist the loop former clockwise until the shorter dowel registers in the second hole. Make sure the loop former is seated securely in both holes in the base. Lift the end of the wire over and around the bolt holding lever number two. Hold the wire flat against the base and firmly press lever number one against the wire and in towards the center of the base. Hold lever one in place and use your fingers to form the wire down toward the center of the base. Keep the wire flat against the base and press lever number two and the wire firmly against the center of the base. Remove the loop former and ear wire. To tighten the top of the ear wire into a smaller diameter, place it around the top of the loop former and pinch both ends of the ear wire around the former. Remove the ear wire and use round nose pliers if you'd like to add a small flare to the end of the ear wire. This is only if you're making a shorter ear wire. If you leave the ear wire longer, the former will do this step for you. Then you simply need to sand or use a cup burr on the end of the ear wire and it's completed. Now I'm gonna show you 
all of the exact same steps, but with a, a wire that's been cut longer than the engraved line on the former. So again, you're gonna place the wire down, insert the longer dowel into the outermost hole in the base, and the short dowel should be toward the outside of the base rather than aligned with the second hole in the base. Insert the wire between the dowels with the balled up end facing down, and then pull the wire taut and hold it flat against the base. Apply slight downward pressure and twist the loop former clockwise until the shorter dowel registers in the second hole. Make sure the loop former is seated securely in both holes in the base. Lift the end of the wire over and around the bolt holding lever number two. Hold the wire flat against the base and firmly press lever number one against the wire and into the center of the base. Hold lever one in place and use your fingers to form the wire down toward the center of the base. Keep the wire flat against the base and press lever two and the wire firmly against the center of the base. Remove the loop former and ear wire. See how on this ear wire it formed the tail for you? Then to tighten the top of the ear wire to a smaller diameter, place it around the top of the loop former and pinch both ends together. Then just snip it to the length that you want and you're finished. Remember to sand or use a cup burr on the end of the ear wire. To take your earrings one step further, you can planish the top curve and the tail with a planishing hammer on a steel bench block. This upper curve here and the tail look great when planished and it also helps to work hard in your ear wire even further. Use a planishing hammer to just tap that top edge down, flattening it out, and work hardening the metal. And then I do the same thing to the tail and you get a nice ear wire with um, some really subtle transitions from round to flat that feels really nice in the ear. And that's it for ear wire bender number one. Visit potterusa.com for more information.